gonna be the longest general election we've had in 100 years in this country because it's the first time in almost 100 years we've had actual incumbents, if you would, pitted against each other who pit records against each other. All these Democrats that I see in the media say they need to get Biden out there more. They need to show him, you know, the vigor and da -da -da. Yeah. the guy's taking the short stairs as it is. Keep him behind a desk with a so, teleprompter. Joe Biden Wait, got yeah. infrastructure passed, the CHIPS Act, which means that instead of China buying all of Australia's critical minerals, we are buying them and bringing back union jobs to the United States. These are accomplishments Trump would have loved. President Biden opened up the border after his inaugural speech. He went to the parade, then he opened up the border. That's what people care about. All right, folks, it is Thursday. You know what that means. Friday Eve here on the Sean Spicer Show, which means that we got a great panel. It is the liveliest that I've had so far. Shall we say it's a little spicy. We're going to cover everything. Nikki Haley, why hasn't she dropped out and when will she? Who is Donald Trump going to pick for his vice presidential nominee? He gave us some hints the other day. We're going to run through the list that he gave us. And Joe Biden, can he ever overcome the stigma of being too old? I don't think so. But let's break it down with the panel. Former Congressman Doug Collins of Georgia, who is now the chair of the America First Policy Institute there in Georgia. Gail Gitcho, Republican strategist and former campaign presidential operative on the Republican side. And Johanna Masca, a fellow News Nation contributor, as well as the former director of advance for President Obama. Let's get into it. All right, gang's all here. Uh, I want to start off uh, Doug, and I'll ask you as the guy that's been on a ballot before, yep. what, what is what is uh, the state of the race speech that Nikki gave the other day? I I thought I, w I was torn between is this a head fake to get the media to give her free attention or was she really going to drop out because she was afraid that she was going to pull a Marco Rubio and get crushed in her own home state? I, I, I felt like she definitely did the uh, got the media to pay attention to her, but I'm still befuddled and that's my word of the day what yep. what she's actually trying to do um well i i mean look it was a head fake that's the only reason she's getting attention these days i mean nobody's covering her south carolina bus tour she's getting not a lot of people are attending the bus tour donald trump can have one or two uh, ra uh rallies which he's had in south carolina and outdraws her whole day in three, two or three days on her bus tour so it's just it's, it was something to get attention my problem is with it now is this She's no, I have no problem with anybody running. I have no problem with anybody staying in a race. I get that. As long as you're running a race about what you want to do and how you want to build. She has transferred since New Hampshire, though, until completely attacking Donald Trump. She has become a de Democrat surrogate at this point for the Joe Biden administration, in which she is actually everything she says against Donald Trump and against Republicans are going to show up and already are showing up in ads, super PAC ads and other things that will show up in the fall. Uh, against Republican candidates. I, you know, there's to me, this is not looking ahead four years where she may have had a chance to come back. I, I, I'm not sure now she's believing the wrong people in saying she should stay in because here's the last point. The only yeah. reason she's staying in is she believes Donald Trump will somehow not be on the ballot in some order in the near future and that by staying on the ballot, she becomes the de facto nominee. When reality hits, that's probably not going to happen. And if something did, happen to Donald Trump, which I don't think it will, there'll be other Republicans to right. take her place. And I don't think she would ever be nominated. All right, folks, if you're a longtime watcher of the show, you know about my friends at Delta Rescue. Uh, go to deltarescue.org and you can check it out. If you're an animal lover, you're going to want to see the amazing work that they're doing there. And it was all started by a guy named Leo Grillo. I've gotten to know Leo over the, the last several months. He's a great guy that had a mission, which was to give abandoned and malnourished and maltreated animals, dog, cats, horses, a sanctuary, not a shelter. It's a no-kill sanctuary. And if you go to deltarescue.org, there's a bunch of videos on there. If you're an animal lover like I am, I've rescued three dogs. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. You watch these animals that have been abandoned have a place to roam free, to get the nutrition they need, the veterinarian care that they need for life. Now, Leo started this off when he rescued one dog, but it has now become a lifelong mission for them. So if you go to deltarescue.org, you can not only see what they're doing, but you can help them out. And they rely solely on our contributions. There's no government funding, no nothing. It's all you and me and everybody else who's an animal lover out there. 
So you can give $5 or $100, 1000 whatever you feel comfortable if you're an animal lover to take care and make this. But you can also go and check out that estate planning kit there and think about making them part of your estate so that this mission that Leo Grillo started can become an enduring one so that dogs, cats, horses can always have a lifelong no-kill shank story to be taken care of. Please go to deltarescue.org and help them out. Johanna, I want you to respond in a second to the to the Obama, I mean, to the to the Biden surrogacy, because they are using mm -hmm. her, her words. But before that, Gail, I want to ask you just from a, a Republican operative standpoint, you've been in several presidential campaigns. Here's what I don't get. She's been asked, what's your path forward? How do you win a state? She was asked on News Nation the other night, um, what state can you win? And she said, well, we just need to do yeah. better than we did before. And yeah. okay, well, still, you never win by getting a lot of second places. That's just you, you won't ever be the nominee. But no. secondly, doing better than New Hampshire, where she was about 10 points down, means single digits in your own home state that you were governor twice of. Right now, by all accounts, the closest poll has her in the mid-20s losing to Donald Trump. So just tell me, if, if you are advising her right now and she comes in at minus 20 or something in her home state, how does she make a case to go forward to Super Tuesday? Well, I'll, let's go back to New Hampshire for a second. I think she was riding kind of a high because she did exceed expectations in New Hampshire. And then a lot of pundits, a lot of consultants looking ahead towards Super Tuesday, towards her home state, they were saying, well, she has a chance to be able to close the gap because the, the voting rules in those states allow for, say, independents to vote. Okay, so that... So that was one reason that she could say that she was moving forward. And then I think that the speech yesterday in South Carolina was, it was her opportunity to sort of shine in the middle of everybody's attacking her. So she, kind of, she did the head fake of everybody, you know, kind of thought, oh, she's going to drop out. But she got up on that stage. And my view is this, she wants to leave it all on the field. I think she knows the writings on the wall. This is her final attempt to sort of give it all that she has. But look, she's only attacking him now. She wasn't attacking him with the same kind of strength in the primary because I'm sure people were telling her, you can't do that because you will alienate voters who might like you, but aren't going to like you if you continue to attack the president. Yeah. So she was being too conservative she wasn't taking any risks. And as everybody on this panel knows, you need to take calculated risks yeah. when you're down. You yeah. have to do it. There's nothing to lose. And if those calculated risks pay off, it's a huge payoff and nothing to lose. So I right. think that's what she's doing right now is leaving it on the field, driving her message against Trump. And just, I think she wants to end this campaign with quote, no regrets. Mm -hmm. So, Johanna, getting back to what Doug was saying, you know, this isn't some Republican talking point. Axios and Politico have all pointed out that the Biden campaign is literally using Nikki Haley's attacks on Donald Trump uh, as, 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 you know, they're, they're putting it out. They're getting yeah. it out to, and to, to media outlets and saying, this isn't us. This is Nikki Haley. She has become their number one surrogate. Well, if if the Democrats are using her as our surrogate, we're doing a really bad job because every time she's on, I see her criticize Joe Biden and call the, you know, big elephant in the room that both of our candidates have been Social Security eligible for a very long time out front, front and center. And the thing is about Nikki Haley, I've got to respect her. You know, I'm a Democrat. I've been a Democrat since I registered as a uh, Democrat when I was 18 years old, much to my father's chagrin, by the way. Smart man. But, you know, <laughs> my the, the truth is she's been a Republican longer than Donald Trump. And she is trying to do everything she can to bring some order to that party. And I'm, I'm not telling Dean Phillips to drop out in the Democratic side. I'm not going to tell Nikki Haley to drop out on the Republican side. Now, whether they're going to actually make a difference in the race is a different question. I think if Donald Trump, something happened to him, the Republicans have other candidates. If That's something right. happened to Joe Biden, there are other candidates than Dean Phillips. But she's been a Republican longer, and I am not going to tell her not to 
stay in that race because she has every right to be in that race. All right. So, okay, so Michelle, Deb, wait, 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 just, wait, 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 one wait. thing on the oh. surrogate front, if yeah. Nikki Haley is Donald Trump or is Joe Biden's surrogate and the best one, it's because they don't have any other surrogates. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they, they have zero Me other too. surrogates. Look at Nikki Haley who beats the crap out of both of them every That's single true. day. And That's true, which is you guys, to the point. Did you notice? Did you notice that after President Biden gave that Hindenburg level press conference a couple of weeks ago, that nobody came out? Sean, you and I both know. You know what? You and I, I, I gotta tell you that we would have had surrogates ready to go and get out there and support the message and push back on us, and they had nothing. So, so the, you know, uh, the yeah, organization I, that on, I just, 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 just you know, to, to use a phrase, reclaiming my time. To Gail's point, right. no, when no, you no, just no. said that, I, I'm sorry, I had PTSD because I remember the night that we fired, that President Trump fired Comey. And he said, okay, Sean, go out there and get the surrogates. I literally called every single Senate office, me or my team, and to a T, every one of them said, sorry, we're busy. And when there's no surrogates, <laughs> that's not a good sign. I'm actually really glad you brought that up, Gail, because yeah. I thought to myself, oh, I've been there. When no yeah. one's willing to back you up, that ain't good. Yeah. Well, let me break something up. And I've listened to both your arguments. Number one, you, uh, from a Democrat perspective, you know they're not going to, we're not going to use a full minute clip. We're going to use a 30 second clip and we're only going to talk about Donald Trump from the Democrat side. So this idea that we're criticizing Joe Biden is hogwash. Number two, mm, the idea that, you know, the issue here of leaving it all on the field, no regrets. Somebody needs to have an honest conversation with her and, 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 and actually look at this. She said, there's nothing, there's no pathway forward. And you made a great point. She turned in the last three weeks after her great announcement of New Hampshire would be her savior, so to speak. She's made her turn to a hard attack on Donald Trump, which wasn't working before. And now when you go on national TV and you say, I'm looking at open primary states and you're in a Republican primary, you basically right. said, I can't get Republican votes. I can't win this without Democrats giving me money and making me votes. Then you basically forgot where you're at. I look, I don't mind anybody running. I mind running when it gets to the point where there is no honest way out of it and you begin to be a detriment to your party's ticket. She can stay as long as she wants, but it's actually hurting, not helping. So and somebody needs to have that hard conversation with her. Gail, you said she left it all on the table. There was a, a piece in Politico that I want to read you guys part of because it says in an era of nationalized politics, it's not unusual anymore for presidential candidates to lose their home states in primaries. Witness yeah. Marco Rubio, who got his clock clinged by Donald Trump in Florida, or Elizabeth Warren, who finished a distant third in Massachusetts years later. But in losing your backyard tends to be a sign that you're not going to win the nomination. OK, we all agree on this. But here was the line that was interesting to me. In Haley's case, however, that's not really a problem because it's not about 2024 anymore. It may not even be about 2028. Then the article stops. And I'm like, well, then what is it about? What are you leaving it all on the table for, Gail? What is it? Is it that you just want to be the martyr? You know, no, I think that she it's for herself. I think that it's for her own campaign. But listen, she was never going to get the nomination. I mean, there wasn't ever a day where somebody said, oh, she might win. And here's why. The base of the party is working class, yeah. blue collar voters that love Trump. And her campaign persona is not one that lends itself well to being attractive to the working class, blue collar voter. They probably look at her and say, I, I can't relate to her and her high heels and, you know, all of this, the, the, this, the stuff that she's talking about. D it didn't appeal to them. It, it, and nobody was able to capture that vote. I mean, after Iowa, you saw Donald Trump got 61% of the vote of uh, voters that didn't have a college degree. I mean, that should have been the writing on the wall for everyone. Early on, sure, there was an opportunity for somebody other than Trump to win, but that opportunity closed after the first debate. Yeah. So October. I have a... I have Joanna. worry, though, with that perspective, because one, I'm from a blue collar family, blue collar mm -hmm. uh, town, Galesburg, Illinois. And if, yeah. you know, Nikki Haley doesn't appeal, she's a governor who, you know, even in the state legislature went on the record trying to hold the legislators in check on giving themselves their own salary increases. You know, if her heels are a problem, Laura Trump's heels are a problem. 
a lot of other people problem, you know, have a problem. I think what she failed on was actually get the ground game. Like she did not invest in actually putting on boots on the ground. And that's what we did with the Obama campaign to upend Hillary Clinton is we put boots on the ground. We were talking to voters every day. And for me, what I'm seeing is a bunch of candidates who have played these big media blitzes and didn't actually invest in the hard work that they needed to do. I think she could have resonated, but it's too little too late. Yeah. Although again, I'm not gonna tell her to get out. Hey guys, you know, when you look at the market these days, it's got its ups and its downs. You always have to worry about what Biden's going to do, which is why I made a choice to call my friends at Bishop Gold Group. And you can go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean to start your journey with them to talk about how you can add precious metals into your investment strategy. Now, maybe you just want to invest like I did. Maybe you've got a 401k or an IRA that's sitting on the shelf somewhere from a previous job and you want to roll it over. The cool part is they can have that conversation with you. You can either go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean and you get a free promotion, which I would do because it's free and I like free stuff. Or you can actually even give them a call at 1-844-984-1616. Just tell them that Sean sent you and have that conversation with them about starting your journey with financial medals with Bishop Gold Group. The thing is, you're getting hit up all over the place. I know it. I hear all the commercials. The difference is, I've talked to a lot of them. I had that conversation with Bishop Gold Group. They are full of integrity and trust and experience. They know what they're doing. Call them or go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean to start your journey, your investment strategy with financial metals with them. Gold, silver, platinum, whatever you want, they'll create a strategy that's right for you. Bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean. Just, can I just ask this? It's your home state. You were governor twice. Uh, yes, you need a ground game. I get it. But if you're, if you want to talk about an uneven match, yeah. she knows every county, every diner, every VFW. Donald Trump's yeah. been there one, you know, has, has done a bunch of rallies. Lost, we would have lost South Carolina had we not won in Iowa with President Obama. I remember but this very is her recently. home state, but here's I, what I don't get. How do you, you this isn't a ground game that. issue. You, they are choosing by 30 points that they don't like you when you're governor twice and frankly, a successful governor. We'll see, well, right? Yeah. We'll see. But All right, hold on. The, I just want to ask you, yeah. Johanna, I want to ask you this question. We've talked about, and, and again, it's not just us talking about this. The media has said she has basically been a surrogate for a Biden. I, you may disagree with that or not, but let me ask you this question. She's very Do you about it. Just, is it from, from a Democrat standpoint, is it better or worse that she stays in the race? Would you rather have her drop out and go one-on-one -on -one with Donald Trump or have her stay in the race for the next few weeks? We would lose the general election if she was the candidate. I was at our reunion. But she, no, no, hold on. Time, time out. We time out. Just hold on. It, this is my question though. She's not going to be the nominee. That's not going to happen. Gail said it, Doug said it. I mean, okay, that's being the case. Is it better or worse that she drops out sooner rather than later? I don't think we care. There are okay. so many people who used to be in Trump's orbit who are speaking out against Trump. You could name the person who you say is a surrogate. And unfortunately, we're not having a real contest on our side. So we're you know, going to have Joe Biden again. So it's a rematch that most of Americans do not want. And I, I would like to see fresh energy. I think as a person who cares about, I would rather have a robust, a robust primary where people are actually fighting and talking about ideas and not talking about, you know, the food fights, but actually something Nikki Haley's been yeah. bringing up that our kids can't read. That is a problem that I okay, want to hear look. Democrats and Republicans address. And we're not hearing it on the Democratic side. And unfortunately, you're not hearing it on the Republican side. But I think Nikki Haley has every right to stay in that race as long as she wants to, to make those points of what she believes the party should be talking to. And uh, as yeah, a mom, look. I love that, that we're talking about kids reading because too many kids are not reading in our schools. Look, it has nothing to do with her being a female, has nothing to do with her being a, any right. uh, candidate, has nothing to do with the fact that her message is wrong time, wrong place in this yeah. primary. Period. Wrong just, audience. Okay, let's just be and honest about that. And plus, nobody's going after her. No. In other words, nobody ever did. Five Nobody kangaroo ever courts, five yeah. kangaroo courts going after Trump with all of these different indictments. And that is what catapulted him when he was he was he was only a, a year ago, guys. He was getting one third percent of the vote, one third. 
one one third of the vote of the Republican Party. Today, he's getting two thirds. Yep. And let's let's talk about what happened. You've got all of these attacks on him from the base or from from people that the base doesn't like. And so that helped him get to where he is. And I'll, I'll take issue with 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 what you said about um, if Nikki Haley is the nominee, you lose. Well, if Donald Trump is the nominee, you lose. You lose. You know, yeah. everybody in 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 um, all the battleground states, Donald Trump is killing him. It, you you have to get to New York and um, by the way, California. new poll today showing that Trump's only twelve down in New York. I mean, yeah. let, let me bring something up here. I want to go off of what you just said because this is important. The issue right now with the vote coming into November is, is it Joe, this is the first time in a hundred years. It's, a lo- it's going to be the longest general election we've had in a hundred years in this country, because it's the first time in almost a hundred years we've had actual incumbents, if you would, pitted against each other who pit records against each other. I would love to have that debate about education, why people can't read. I would love to point out the problems in our inner school systems and teachers unions. I'll take that debate all day long, twice on Sunday and win. And it's winning in minority communities. It's winning in other communities that we're picking up. Here, the, the problem that we're looking at here and looking at as we go forward here in this race, is I do believe Donald Trump can win this. I believe there's some certain systemic problems that the Democrats have that Biden cannot address. Also, here's my last point. 2016, Donald Trump won because he was specific. He talked about immigration. He talked about economy. He talked about the problems in our country. 2016, Hillary Clinton was measuring drapes and talking about the Democratic vision for a world united. Okay, terrible. 2020 became a referendum with COVID and everything else and Joe in the basement and everything. He, nobody knew who he was to start with. Coming back. 2024 is now coming back around to 2016 to, to 2016 times when all the Democrats want to talk about is we're saving democracy. We're saving democracy. Most people can't define what they even mean by that. And Donald Trump is back to talking about immigration, yep. economics, and our standing in the world. This exactly. is a repeat, I hope, of 2016. And let the Democrats think they can just beat Donald Trump simply because he's they don't he, like him. He's families talking about are not, families are not <laughs> sitting around years. their kitchen table talking about democracy. They're yeah. talking about the border. They're talking about the fact that they can't afford housing. They are talking yep. about the fact that Biden has dementia and he's he's mostly not there all of the time. So that's what they're worried about. And so and they're not even paying attention to the election. Uh, it's like 59 to 39 that Republicans yep. are engaged in this election, whereas just Democrats are not. And so I think that this- having this long election cycle is going to be even worse for Biden. There's a certain segment that was always going to say was Trump, no doubt about it. And there's a certain segment, like if Donald Trump had gracefully walked away from office and said, I don't think that this election was fair because of all of these reasons, and yet I am going to leave because I fought in court, then it would be a different story. But that's not what happened. He actually (laughs) caused the biggest protest we've ever seen in a situation where we had the Confederate flag at the, you know, it, no one cares. for the first time at our Capitol, there's a small segment that doesn't care. But the second. No, that, a lot. Big, that, wait, wait. There's a small there's segment, a small that, segment cares. that doesn't care. There's a no. small segment that does not care and will vote for Trump no matter what. A hundred percent. But some people, when they go to sleep at night, do they want someone who's going to appoint Laura Trump in charge of the RNC, his own daughter-in-law. Do they oh my someone God, that who's is going so to insane. Do you really oh. think people go no. to sleep at yes. night thinking yes. about the Confederate no flag? No one cares. Oh, oh my God. God. I hope, so. I hope they, they, not- they care Nobody about cares. the fact that our country, our security, our, our security, we take for granted too often. And if we want to let people who are just going to disobey the law and yeah. get away with whatever... Then yes, it's it's not going to be effective for oh. us. I okay, we want to take that so on. So wow, we're going down line in order. You guys are going to say platform. all these things that Biden did. God, I I mean, it's just unbelievable. You guys just don't get it. I mean, I hope that every uh, single Democrat runs on that platform of let's make this about Democrats democracy. Democrats aren't running and about that. Let's make Democrats this are about running abortion. on union jobs. You guys on want to be on good no, 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 no. That is false. You guys want it to be about January 6th and abortion. 
And so no one Joe Biden cares. got infrastructure passed, which means that oh, there's clean drinking that. water coming to different communities. Trump would have loved that. The CHIPS yeah. Act, which means that instead of China buying all of Australia's critical minerals, we're buying them and bringing back union jobs to the United States to build Nobody chips. Cares. These are accomplishments Trump would have loved. But the truth is, if we want to back up and look at the Trump administration, they spent more money in pandemic co- fraud. COVID-19 PPP fraud than we've spent in the entire war in Ukraine trying to protect ourselves from Russia, which used to be a priority of the Republican Party. All right, folks, are you scared of the dark? (laughs) Because I can be sometimes. I know my kids get scared of the dark. But imagine going without power for a few hours in the middle of the night, uh, a few days, weeks, maybe even months. And there's all sorts of threats that are out there. I spent you know, time at the U.S. War College, planning, doing contingency planning, seeing how people get ready for things. The one thing that you can do for yourself right now is go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer. Check out the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. I have one. This is how I make sure that if something were to happen to me, I could plug in my refrigerator, my computers, and gosh knows those kids with the computers and the tablets, they would want those. Your phone, all the things that you rely on power on, medical devices that you may need. All of it can be done with the Patriot Power Generator. It can be powered through solar panels that come with it for free. You can bring it inside your house. It's portable. You can put it in your car and take it somewhere if you had to go somewhere, help out a neighbor or family member. No fumes inside. All of that gets powered with the Patriot Power Generator. And because of those solar panels, you never have to worry about getting it recharged or refilled with gas. No, no, no. That's all taken care of with the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. Go to 4 patriots.com slash Spicer to check it out. This is the kind of thing that you need in your house when and if an emergency happens. Be prepared. Get the Patriot Power Generator 2000X at 4patriots.com slash Spicer. I I really hope all of you can, all of you Democrats continue this cycle of thinking that it is going to be a a red wave because all of the things, you never once said the word border. You never, you you, you have an immigration fentanyl. President Biden the, the opened border does up the matter. border after his inaugural speech. He went to the parade, okay. then he opened up the border. So, so I talked th- to Janet Napolitano about. about this. I just actually had an episode with Janet Napolitano. She was border governor. She was our uh, DHS secretary. Uh, we were talking about the border. And here's the truth is that there are the, the lower border numbers were actually during her time, her tenure as DHS secretary than it was during the Trump administration. You guys and the love Biden that. administration has no, right. massive I'm numbers. Not. I'm not. You've done, you've, done went into, you've done went into my territory now. You've done stepped okay. into my territory <laughs> on immigration. Let's talk. Okay, number one, we the, the media back in Obama's last four years made a big production of the of the increases that were surging on the border. We actually stayed an extra week in the Republican led House to make sure that monies and some other stuff were sent to the border because it was then quote a crisis. It then came down under border. If you want to talk yeah. to somebody about the border, talk to the border uh, people like Tom Homans and other people like that. Don't go back to your Democrat surrogate from five six years ago. Go back to ones who actually protected the border. When you also have a a DHS secretary who then says it's legal to send these parolees through actual checkpoints when it's not in the law. That is not in the law. It is not available to them to actually just take people and say, look, we're going to make you legal by sending you through a a regular port of entry and calling you parolees. That is not making it legal. That's just cleaning it up so it looks better for the media. The yeah. problem with the, the problem the Democrats have on immigration is this: is not only human trafficking. It's now in Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, and places like that. It's now in your backyard, and you have liberal mayors screaming about it, saying the federal government needs to bail me out. The other part is here too, and here's what's going to solve this whole problem for the Democrats. Before it's already out there, I've already talked to Democrat operatives. I've seen some others. Here's what's going to happen in the next few weeks before the State of the Union. Mm-hmm. You are going to see. Joe Biden, who said, I can't do anything, is going to issue very Trump-like orders, executive yeah. orders. They're going to name them everything but Trump, and they're going to introduce them before the State of the Union, and the State yeah. of the Union is going to be, Joe Biden says, you didn't act, so I had to. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's the solution, the Democrat I'll, solution to the border. I'll give yeah, you this. Our, the ambassador who was ambassador during our tenure to Mexico also told me that the Biden administration is not the Obama administration. 
and it is different in terms of implementation, which I will give you. I will give you. There are some things that could be, that have to be stronger in implementation, but the Republicans had a border bill that was 90% theirs. In well, the Senate, I, I, wait, hold on. I appreciate you telling us that and bill they sucks. And they it for inaction. <laughs> no, 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 That border bill, Congress. that border was bill was not 90%. Before. That border bill was nowhere close to 90%. No. And here's, I got okay. you one better. If, let, me, you know, let me go back and show under, under Obama how they really think about immigration. During 2009, 2010, y'all had Valhalla on Capitol Hill. You had the Senate with, an un, uh, with a veto-proof majority. You had the House with a very large majority. And you could have done anything you wanted. Anything you wanted. Stop. So, anything you wanted. And you chose to do Obamacare. You chose to do Dodd-Frank. You chose to do climate work, and you never touched it. And if you don't believe me, go back and look at my tapes with Jared Polis on the floor of the House when they brought forward immigration bills saying we need to do something on immigration. And I reminded him of that Valhalla moment that y'all had. You chose to use the immigration system as a pawn and not fix it. If you wanted to, you had the opportunity. You didn't even have to negotiate with Republicans. You yeah, chose They didn't even not. know it was a problem. They had no idea no, it was no, a problem until... True. Hang on a second. They had no idea. Democrats had no idea it was a problem and they planned to ignore it. The most shrewd, ballsy political move that I've ever seen. Tell the truth, Sean. You know this is true. Was when President Trump pulled that bill or he told them to not do it because he wanted to use it as an election issue. And so now everybody is, all the Democrats are saying, oh, well, they had the chance. I guarantee you that when there was a conversation about whether or not to call Mitch McConnell and say, don't do that bill, I want it, I want to run on it. The, the choice is, oh gosh, voters are going to see that we had the chance and we didn't do anything, or they're going to see the open border that we fixed. So there was, there, I mean, that's not really a choice. So that was a really killer, shrewd move by President Trump. Um, you know, to, 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 to not be able to go around. You well, look, an can I just say this? Here's the problem, though. Obama, I mean, excuse me, Biden, I think he, I think Doug's right. He's going to get up at the State of the Union and talk about what he wants to do. Granted, it'll be a series of talking points, not action. But the bottom line is, and this is the trap for the Democratic Party right now, Johanna, is if you guys do try to secure the border, even in word only, your progressive wing is going to freak out even more and you're going to screw yourself with your base or you're actually not going to do anything, which is what's really going to happen. And then you'll still have a problem with terrorism, fentanyl, et cetera, because we'll see it coming over the border. The bottom line is, I've told people this all the time, 60 Minutes had a piece the other night where they're showing open areas. This the People are not going through ports of entry. And when the people are asked, you know, did you call Washington? They'll say, yeah, they didn't want to do anything. The border is actually open. This isn't a talking point. It's physically open and people can see it every day on the news and social media. And that's on Biden. And he can't, he has to choose between actually securing the border and doing what's right for the country or appeasing his far left base, which is critical to his reelection. Yeah, so, Joanna, Joanna, I'm yeah. going to actually give you a compliment here. It's a, okay. it's, it's a compliment. I think, and I, and I mean this, I think the, the Biden strategy right now is the best strategy they have. <laughs> I, I do believe that because that's your he's, compliment. Not, he's not capable <laughs> of doing anything else. He yeah. cannot get up and defend it in a hour long press conference without cue cards that shows the press, the, the reporter's uh, picture and the question they're gonna ask. He can't do what some of the other candidates do. I, if I was in your position, which I'm glad I'm not, and you're glad you're not in my yeah. position, I would take the debate and I would try to make it about Republicans not doing anything about it. The problem you've got now is that would have worked four years ago. That would have worked yeah. maybe even three and a half years ago. It doesn't work now because the, the problems that Greg Abbott and some of the other governors, by sending these migrants to New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, you've now put it in the back door of liberal progressive politics. That's right. And, and that's okay. the problem. Okay. Can I, can I, can I, can I, I got to combat Listen some of these. going to happen on the left. So the left is already abandoning Biden, the far left, the, like the yeah. lady from yeah, Detroit. Some, What's her name? Yeah. Not Michigan. The one that married his brother, but... The, to leave, yes. To leave. <laughs> to leave. Um, she's abandoned. She's telling people not to vote for Biden because of his position on Israel. She's and saying vote in, no in choice Gaza. in the primary. So, she's saying so vote no choice second. in the primary. But now, if Biden goes to secure the border, what is going to do? What is that going to do to 
other people on the far left. They don't want that border secure. No. So okay. now he's going to have I, problems on so the left. So can I just go back on a couple way. things? Because you said that Democrats didn't care. Actually, Janet Napolitano, as governor, was the first governor to call for the National Guard to help secure her border. So no, okay, the Democrats did care. But I, I didn't I'll say also they didn't care. We, I said but, you didn't know. We, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything because by the time President Obama came into office, we were also reeling with the fact that we were inheriting a recession, massive amounts of Americans losing their homes every 30 seconds yeah. and Americans losing their health care. The and, and so, but God, the no, good old days. why? Why would I stop listening to her? We're She's like, we just, hold on. Can I, can I just jump in here? Because I want to ask, I want to <laughs> sort of switch gears here for a second, but not really. <laughs> jo- Johanna, you, you handled press advance yeah. uh, for Obama. And, and mm-hmm. one of the big issues right now is there's a lot of concern among all Americans, but it's even among a lot of Democrats about his age. One of the things they keep yeah. saying in these memos that they all put out to each other is we've got to stop the bedwetting. We should show him who he is. I have said the, the problem, and, and this isn't my... This is my analysis, so I'll be, you know, and I obviously have my bias, but you yeah. can't ask somebody to do what they're incapable of doing. So all these Democrats that I see in the media say they need to get Biden out there more. They need to show him that he's, you know, the vigor and yeah. the guy's taking the short stairs as it is, right? <laughs> At some point, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm just being honest. You can't say, you know, what we need to do is show him climbing up a rock. You yeah. can't climb the big stairs as a person who handled press advance. How could, wouldn't you turn around and say, Hey guys, no, no. Keep him behind a desk with a so, teleprompter. Don't ask him to do more. He can't do the basics. Sean, when we rolled out, uh, Biden as our vice president, I remember so clearly many things. You probably literally I, wheeled him out. <laughs> Did you guys call it Scare Force One back then? It's so funny, right? You guys literally (laughs) have a guy who is a a clown show taking over the Republican Party, who is a Democrat, by the way. But that's a different story. But uh, on Joe Biden, I remember us rolling out him as vice president in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And David Axelrod, which, of course, he's being very critical of Biden right now. But it's so funny because then he was trying to convince me, the younger generation, that yes, this is a incredible person, incredible public servant who's you know really going to help us, uh, you know, make sure that he has the um, the knowledge that he needs to be the best leader because he knows how Washington works. And to some point, actually, to many points, he was actually right. Uh, but <laughs> here's the thing about Joe Biden: we had to have a monitor on like what he was saying because he would go so off script. This was years ago, right? He would say the craziest stuff. And you were like, what is he doing? He shouldn't be doing that right now. And so literally in the advanced world, it was like somebody report back into headquarters so we know what he's doing. That's when normal politics works. Now your guy, he just goes out there and says crazy things, including confuses Nancy Pelosi and, you know, <laughs> the the woman who's been a Republican longer than him, Nikki Haley. Uh, so, you know, I don't know that it's like completely fair, but Sean, their tactics, I think their tactics, you're probably right, are wrong for Joe Biden. He's always had a stutter. He's not going to be the best speaker. He's not going to be eloquent. He is going to get things done. And that's the stuff that he actually has gotten done with Chips Act. It's not sexy, but it's oh bringing back American jobs. You can't say so Chips Act anymore. That matters to places oh. like him. They're they going on the block We're right putting now. Doug to sleep. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. They care about their jobs. Oh, my God. God. Hey, if they do care, okay, If and, and I've heard this argument now from Democrats for the last year and a half. Number one, if you could find me ten people, a hundred people in a, a ten people in a room anywhere in the U.S. that could name the Chips Act, I'd buy you dinner. It's uh, Punch and John. They've got Punch a and terrible job. job messaging that. But yeah. here's the deal. Okay, so we so here buy some Americans dinner and talk about the Chips Act and yeah, what's good. If they and what's had bad. any money to go to the grocery <laughs> store, <laughs> here, no, if they can the afford to We're, go to the grocery store. Uh, great. Here's the problem: if you're a general, you know consultant, all of those restaurants shutting down in Los Angeles. It's because they can't afford rent. It's because they can't afford the food prices to come in. So, yes, buy here in Los Angeles because they need it. California is its own special place. And you understand they're finally figuring out 
<laughs> yeah, the, they're finally figuring out in economics that if you actually let people rob your stores blind, they're going to shut. They're going to close the doors, and it has nothing to do with racism. It has absolutely doing nothing to actually stopping the criminal activity in your store. That's your problem. Yeah, they no? needed to do that um, before. All right, but let me, let me here, do a quick round robin. Hold on. Can I just do this? Do, do this. Is Joe Biden, I, I get asked this all the time, will Joe Biden be the nominee? Let's just, I, I'll, I'll start with you, yes. Doug. Is, is he going to be the nominee? Yes, because they got nowhere else to go. Gail, do you think he's going to be the nominee? Yes, and it's brilliant that he's got Kamala Harris as the VP because oh. as long as he's there, she is never going to be in that Oval Office, thank God. So, oh, yeah, we're all know, trying scarier, to weaken at Bernie stuff. The scarier thing for me after that Hindenburg press conference was when he said, I, I have um, a clear mind or wh whatever it was, was the next day when she was asked a question about being ready to serve. And she said, I am ready to serve because all of America knows that that has no written all over it. Yeah. So she sat there. She said, yes. um, I'm sorry, did you watch that press conference? Yeah, I'm ready. I got my no, Bible out last that. night. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Swear me in. Yeah. Johanna, what is she you... supposed to say? No, I'm I, not. First ready of all, to I'm first? sorry. That that is the worst answer. Of course I'm ready. It's I mean, she look, you answer this Gavin Newsom when asked this at a town hall was asked, you know, he said, Look, I have a lieutenant governor. They're ready to go. That's how it works. She is just so unnuanced. Every time yeah. she says something, it's like, dude. Were you not ready for this question? You have an 81 year old dude who has a trouble getting up the stairs, can't get a sentence out. If you don't think you're getting that question, then you should fire your, well, actually you can't fire your staff because they quit. But, <laughs> but the point is you should be ready for that. Johanna, do you really think he's going to be your nominee? Yes, he's going to be the nominee. And look, on the Kamala Harris front, like she's she's not as eloquent as uh, Governor Newsom. I'll give you as that. Anybody. Uh, no, but Governor Newsom, you know, he's he's Governor Haircut. He's got the pretty hair. He was married to Kimberly Guilfoyle before he's she a good was looking marrying man. Donald Trump Jr. I mean, it's all in the family, right? Here's what I want. I want good people who actually have not, like, come up through political dynasties to be elected president. Joe Biden was not part of a political dynasty. You can argue that his kids and his brother have done some nefarious things. Fine. But yes, the, we do argue you that. Know, <laughs> we the, do. The, yeah, you can say that. But right, it wasn't I, I wanna, Joe Biden. And Kamala listen. Harris made her own way. She had no political connections. She made her own way okay. in California and to the vice president. Yes. Well, that's, oh, no, and that's why. That in the Chips Act. Yeah, she did. Right, right, that, in the, she did. that in the Chips Act. That'll get you there. Okay, <laughs> I, got time for, I got time for one more question. I want to go around the horn. Donald Trump the other night on Tuesday night was on with Laura Ingram in this town hall. Mm. He was asked, I, I love, this is my favorite question in case you don't know. Uh, he was asked about his VP running mates. He named the following people, Tim Scott, Ramaswamy, DeSantis, Byron Donalds, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, and former Hawaii Representative Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, here's the thing. I'll just give you my take and then I want to tell you. I, I, I really find it infuriating when people, now him, so I'm mad at him. I'm not if you're watching, because he always watches. Uh, <laughs> but but Donalds and DeSantis are a no-brainer. You cannot run with someone from your state. You're not giving up 30 electoral votes. And frankly, as far as Tulsi Gabbard goes, you're not going to, the delegates will go so far, but they're not going to take a pro-choice Dem as a Republican. Doug, 30 seconds, tell me what you think of that list and who pops for you. I'm not sure any of them actually do. I think Donald Trump keeps that very close to his best. I'm not sure any of those are. They could be fall, They could be a, a head pivot that we've talked about before. But if I had to pick on that list, Tim Scott or Christy No. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. Look, Tulsi Dak Gabbard is a dear friend of mine, uh, and I, I, I like her a lot. But she's no way going to. I wouldn't vote for her unless she changed some positions on life and other issues that she has. But she is good on some of the issues, so we do get along. And but I just don't see that happening. But I, th so I think if I had to pick that list, Tim Scott or Christy, no. All right, Johanna, I'm going to ask you this because I want to end on a positive with Gail. But if I if you had to pick who you guys care about, who you would, if, if anyone, does anyone, any of those names, would they go, hey, that that person's formidable? Uh, probably Tim Scott. Okay. I mean, on the on the Tulsi thing, though, you just made the race about abortion. And on abortion, every time we've seen this play out in every state, we've won. Okay, it's not, we're not picking a, a pro-choice woman. It's not, I mean, it's not no, going to happen. Like, well, here's, the, here's the interesting thing. I, I love it that we're going to go down this, let, let's fight. Republicans, we need to take example from y'all. Y'all have yeah. made a one issue out of abortion. 
78 percent of the country, you guys are 70, famous for that okay, listen 78 percent of the country agree that there should be some form of restrictions on abortion right. when our candidates finally get to the understanding of that and make sure that they make democrats say we're okay with taking abortion up to 40 weeks and that's what the general right. principle is then they're going to say 78 percent of this country believes there should be some restrictions right. on abortion Gail, it's Gail Gitchell, i'm going to give you the final i'm giving you the final 20 seconds to, to end on a happy note here I don't think it's going to be anybody on that list because Ooh. people care about the vice president about as much as they care about the CHIPS Act. So the, the, the person that I think it's going to be, and it should be, is Sarah Huckabee Sanders, because yeah. that role hmm. is somebody who is trustworthy, who will stand behind the president yep. as she's done and in front of the president as she's done, you know, as, as his press secretary and somebody who's going to be loyal. Yeah. You know, I don't I think agree. anybody on that Laura Ingram list is plans on uh, being the vice president. They right. all have dreams of being I, the president. I think what Doug said is also important. Trump is beautiful at the head fake. So he's getting people to look one direction. So it's, there's a bit of a surprise. Mm. I love you guys for, do you, this is the most robust conversation that we've had since the show launched. Thank you for being here. Everybody, of we've course. got a great show tomorrow with Steve Krakauer. We're going to break down where the media has gone in this cycle. Don't want to miss that. Thanks for being here. Remember to subscribe, YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Spotify. We do it all. And every night at seven on the first, 347 on DirecTV. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.